The Screaming Skull, told live and unplugged, at the DMS, Regina, Saskatchewan, November 28, 2019. It was a dark and stormy night. Really. No rain, but in the distance, the sound of the waves crashing into the nearby shore. Captain Bob had just finished pouring the gin when he said, <clears throat> uh, You know, old friend, it just doesn't do to go around making jokes about murder or to tell stories about how to kill people. But how was I to know that Cousin Luke was on bad terms with his missus? What's that you say? You didn't know Luke Pratt was my cousin? Indeed he was, and he left me the house when he was killed, uh, uh, when he died, I mean. His son never came back from the South Africa War, so I was the only one left. <sighs> That's not all I inherited, however. Not all of it. Uh, uh, where was I? Oh, yes, I had dinner with them, you see, in this very house, and that was when the uh, mischief started. It was a stormy November evening, and a gale was blowing, just, just as it is now. The gales of November, eh? What? What was that? Uh, that was it, what I call the thing. No, it, it's not the sound of the storm. You know better than that. That was it. It. The other thing I inherited. I've heard it many times. It, it's nothing to be alarmed at. But I'm glad you've heard it too. So you'll better understand what I have to tell you. A and you won't say it's only my imagination and dispute the thing. Anyway, the night I had dinner with Luke and his wife was a wild one, same as tonight. And Luke was in a bad mood. One of his patients had died that day. And, and the meal was a poor one which seemed to vex him. So what does he say but, You see? You see? My wife is trying to poison me. No doubt she'll succeed some day. Well, I could see Mrs. Pratt was hurt, so I tried to lighten the mood by joking. But you should never joke about murder, uh, about killing people. What I actually said was, Oh, Mrs. Pratt is too clever a woman to use such an obvious method of getting rid of the likes of you. No, she would do something more subtle, like pour molten lead in your ear whilst you slept, like that woman in Ireland did for three husbands that way. She did for three husbands that way before she was caught. You never heard of the case. Neither had Luke or his wife. But what the Irishman did was to melt a small quantity of lead and then use a funnel to pour the molten lead into the men's ears as they lay in a deep, drugged sleep. Uh, of course, the deaths were all ruled natural ones, as there was no obvious signs. She might have gotten away with it forever, but uh, husband number four somehow woke up. Uh, they hanged her in the end. Well, Mrs. Pratt died shortly thereafter, I was on duty at the time, and I remember having a bit of an odd feeling about it. Coming so close after our discussion of murder and murderous spouses. I was at the lakehead when I got the news. But still, it was hard to believe. Hard to believe that Luke would. That Luke really would. I came to visit Luke next time I was on leave. He was very ill and looked terrible. 
He had lost weight, and his face looked like a skull. The skin stretched over it like a layer of yellowed parchment, and his eyes had a bright and terrible glare that was disagreeable to look at. Mad eyes, and which burned the fires of hell. Do I really think Luke killed his missus? Why would I think that? Why would I think that he killed her? Well, first of all, there was the ladle. Just an ordinary tin ladle for stirring soup. They sell them at the general store in the village. Well, I, I found one amongst Luke's things, and in the bowl I found a little piece of lead. As if Luke had heated the bowl and melted some lead in it. Melted some lead. But for what purpose? Now, now I know what you're thinking. That he might have heated it to pour it through a funnel into his wife's ear while she slept. But, but it could have been for anything, man. Luke was a great fisherman. Perhaps he wanted a lead weight for fishing. I don't know. I don't know. But I threw the ladle into the lake. I didn't want some servant to find it and start gossip. There was enough of that about Luke's death. What happened? What happened? He was found on the beach with his throat torn out, and the inquest verdict was death by the teeth of a person or animal unknown. Like I said, that was bad enough. Bad enough. But it appeared Luke died as he was trying to throw something into the lake. And that something was apparently a human skull. And the skull was found lying on the rough stones by his head. His head, lying right by his head. I wish I could have seen what happened, because I can't understand it. If he had been throwing the skull into the lake, how did it wind up lying by his head? Well, away from the water. So, you can see there was enough already to start gossip. I would have liked, too, to have seen the wounds on Luke's throat and and compared them with certain teeth. The skull? It was returned here, as it was considered Luke's property. Oh yes, it's here now, in a hat box on the top shelf of the closet in the master bedroom. That was it you heard a while ago. That scream. That was the skull. Yes, that's what it was. And more to the point, I think it's her skull. I don't know why I first began to think it was her skull. At first I thought it was not an unusual thing for a doctor to have a skull and that it was probably something he had had since medical school. But if so, why try and throw it into the lake? Unless it was her skull. Mrs. Pratt's skull. But why would he have such a thing? Why would he have removed it from her body? Why? And the only conclusion I can come to was that he killed her, and he wanted to remove all evidence of his crime. He could have removed it while the coffin stood in the parlor, as he kept vigil by the side of the body. Yes, that's when I suspect it would have happened. If it happened, of course. I wonder... I wonder what he put under the sheet to take the place of her head. I've noticed Mrs. Pratt's work bag is missing. It would have been the right size and shape for it. I wonder... I wonder... Yes, yes, yes. That was it again. That scream. How do I stand it? 
It's only a sound man. It can't hurt you. My, you've gone as white as a sheet. Of course I've tried to get rid of it. But it doesn't want to leave. It hates me and has plans for me, I know. One time in my desperation, I threw it from the window of the master bedroom, threw it across the road and into the trees. It made a frightful sound in the air, much louder than usual. It's a wonder it didn't wake the village. Oh, but for a few hours at least, I thought I was rid of the thing. Or so I thought. But then, about three o'clock in the morning, about three o'clock, something knocked on the front door. Knocked twice, very loudly. I opened the window and called out, Who's there? I looked down, but there was no one there. And then the knocks came again. Two of them, very loud. There was nothing for it but to go down and throw open the door. But there was nothing, no one, until I looked down and saw the skull sitting on the door sill, sitting at my feet. And then, and then it, it must have been the wind that blew it, but it rolled over the sill and back inside the house. Did, did someone find it in the road and bring it back? I hope so. I hope so. Still, there was nothing for it but to put it back in the closet of the master bedroom, put it back into the hat box where it is kept. It doesn't want to leave. It doesn't want to leave me, for it hates me and has plans for me. Did Luke kill her? I have my suspicions, but I wouldn't tell them to anyone but you. You see, there is something that rattles inside the skull when you pick it up. No, I've never tried to get it out. Never tried to find out what it is. I'd rather not know. Because if it was a little pellet of lead, then I'd know for sure that he did indeed do it. And I'd know I'd killed her almost as much as, as Luke had done. You say you'd like to see the skull? I have no objections. Here, you take the candle. One of these days I'll have to get those newfangled electric lights installed. Come on. Just, uh, just a moment. I have to stop on, I have to stop on the landing to get my breath. Well, we're not as young as we used to be, are we? There, there, that's better. It's in the closet here, in this old hat box. It's gone! Gone! The skull is gone! It... Listen! Did you hear that? What an awful, awful sound! I've never heard it shriek like that. All around the house as if it was passing all around the house outside. They'll be sure to hear it in the village. What's that? I tell you, man, it, it's gone, gone. Look at the box. Eh? What's that you've got there? You say it was in the box? Uh, a little pellet of lead? A little pellet of lead? 
So Luke did murder her. Poor, poor Mrs. Pratt. There must have been a moment of agony before she died. Think about having molten lead poured in your ear. My God! I don't half like this. The skull has gotten outside. We must find it and put it back in the box, inside the house, in the closet. What? What's that you say? Why don't we bury it? Bury it? Why not indeed? Yes, yes, that is what we shall do. Bury it. Bury it so deep, no one can hear it, no matter how loud it screams. There, there, did you hear that? That knocking? It wants back in. You, you'll come with me, and then you'll see it, see what I mean. But let's take the lantern. If we open the door and the candle blows out, I'm liable to lose my senses. I, I don't mind admitting it. There. There we, there, there we are. That's got it lit. I'll hold the lantern up while you open the door. Gone. Open it. Uh, uh, catch it! Catch it! Catch it, man! It's rolling across the floor! There! That curse this wretched lantern that's gone out. H have you got it? Have you have you got it? Good man. Good good eh? What it bit you? It, it drew blood? H here, let me see. Uh, yes, yes you're bleeding. Give me give me the skull. I'll put it back in the hat box and lock it in the closet for tonight. We can bury it in the back garden in the morning. So low, no one will ever hear it screaming. Bury it in the morning. In the morning. I'm about done in. I, I couldn't face it now. We'll bury it in the morning. Now let's see to this hand. We'll treat it with carbolic. Give me the thing. I'll return it to where it wants to be. You can sleep down here, where I normally sleep. I'd give it up the master bedroom because of the... because of the sound, but I can manage there for one night. Now, let's see to that hand, and, and, then, and then we'll get a good night's sleep. I'm totally knackered. Knackered. We'll have plenty to do in the morning, eh? Bury this thing. Bury it deep. Bury the thing and, and have done with it. Once and for all. In the morning. We'll bury it. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. My my good friend. Thank you so much. Uh, and if there's anything you want in the night, uh, just sing out. Just sing out. And I'll come. Thank you, my friend. Now let's let's get a good night's sleep. We'll have lots to do in the morning. Let's sleep. I was woken up by the most blood-curdling scream. I have ever heard in my 65 years. I called out for Bob and ran upstairs to the master bedroom. But I was already too late. Bob lay on the bed, covered in gore. His throat had been torn out. The skull had completely disappeared. It has never been found. WSJ here. I hope you enjoyed my performance 
of the Screaming Skull. Be sure to visit your local library if you want to read the full story or listen to it on the Horror Babble channel. Link in the description. F. Marion Crawford wrote some great horror stories, including my favorite all-time vampire story, For the Blood is the Life. I've also started a podcast as a second home for some of my material, so come visit me there. Again, there's a link in the description. Due to upcoming YouTube policy changes, I will be taking down some of my stuff, but I will continue to make new content, so please stay with me, and if you're new, please subscribe. But enough of this. Remember, stay hungry, for the blood is the life. <laughs>